Hi friends, just want to welcome you back to my second video and um, tonight uh, I will be going through 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and um, hopefully we will discover many truths that will help you and I um, as we read from God's Word. Chapter 2, verse 1 of 1 Corinthians. Paul said, When I came to you, brothers, announcing the testimony from God that he gave to you, I did not come with brilliance of speech or wisdom because I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. My speech and my proclamation was not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the Spirit of God and the power of God, so that your faith may not be based upon man's wisdom, but that your faith would be based upon God's power. Friend, this is extremely profound. Paul said, When I came to you, giving you the testimony that God gave to us, I did not present it to you with brilliant speeches, with wisdom, or with words, persuasive words, but I delivered it to you with a demonstration of the Holy Spirit and with a dem demonstration of God's power. Now, when you read in the book of Acts, you can find how many wonderful, powerful acts happen. And that's the reason why it's called Acts. It's the Acts of the Apostles. I mean, dead people were being raised from the, you know, from the dead. Uh, blinded eyes was being seen, you know, opening. And all of these things done was with the mighty power of the Holy Ghost working through these men. And the day and age that we live in, I'm telling you that that's what's wrong with Christianity today. It's all about words. It's all about fancy words and uh, cliches. You know, Think of this. When you go to church or you watch uh, evangelists or whoever on TV, how many services have you been in where you have seen blinded eyes open? When you have seen the dead raised back to life? When you have seen people that were afflicted Maybe they were deaf, blind, couldn't walk, confined to a wheelchair. How many services have you been in where you saw the power of the Holy Ghost fall on these people and they are healed miraculously? Or are we not accustomed to going into a church service where everybody is dressed so nice? And everybody acts so positive and proper. And, you know, we sit there in reverence and we listen to the message of the pastor or the evangelist. We sing our songs. We praise and we worship. And we feel good about it. And we bow our heads at the end of the service. And we say, Amen. 
and we greet the pastor, and we go home. Um, how many souls got delivered from going to hell today? How many people were touched by the power of the Holy Ghost? Or was this service just about making you feel good? Was the service just about hearing a message that sounded good and got you a little excited about, you know, hey, I'm a Christian. What about all of these folks that we pass every day, Monday through Saturday? And if you hear anything in this video that is out of view, let me tell you what it is. It's two little cats. <laughs> My son's cat that he uh, had for about nine years passed away a couple of days ago. It was heartbreaking. And um, late yesterday afternoon, um, we were able to get him two kittens. A, a, a brother and a sister and um, they're very loving playful um, but I've already told them they're not allowed to be part of the video <laughs> so anyway um, they're allowed to play around the house so that's what you might hear okay so much for that interruption I just didn't want anybody wondering what in the world is going on behind that video and that's what it is okay so Think of this. We pass people every day that are on their way to hell. And where's the care? Where's the love? Folks, let me tell you something. Those people we pass every day in stores and uh, we'll be, you know, walking down the streets or going shopping or in a mall. We pass people every day that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. What about those folks? God loves them just as much as he loves me. God loves them just as much as he loves you. How many of these folks do we invite to church? How many of these folks do we let them know that Jesus loves them? You know, I have a... a, a a little track like thing that I pass out to strangers something that I've made and it's what I call the love letter and um, it's something that I wrote and I'll just come up go up to a stranger and say hey I want to give you something they'll look at you and smile and say sir I'll say I hand it to them and say God bless you and they'll look at it and on the front of it says because you are loved and then some of them look at me and say, I'm loved. And I look at them and says, yes, you are. The Father loves you. And um, they'll say thanks. You know, and they have uh, an opportunity there to read about God's love and the way to accept Jesus Christ as their own Lord and personal Savior. But the whole point of all of this is one thing. Paul said, your faith cannot be in fancy words, brilliant speech, and it has to be in the power of God and in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we need in our churches today. We are walking around as temples of God Almighty with the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And we need to be a vessel that God Almighty can use to touch the world. Folks, let me tell you, the world ain't going to come to our churches. But we mingle with the world every single day. And God opens doors that you can say something to someone and touch them with the message of the gospel if only you would open your eyes and look 
for those opportunities that the Lord gives them. Excuse me, that gives you and gives them a chance to hear the message of the gospel. So just remember this. Your faith needs to be in the power of God and in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit and not what some preacher has said that sounds good. It's your faith is in the power of the Holy Ghost. Verse 6. However, among those who are mature, we do speak a wisdom, but it's not a wisdom of this age or a wisdom of the rulers of this age. And these are coming to nothing. Folks, the rulers of this age, they are coming to nothing. As the kingdom of God gets closer every single day, the rulers that are in control of this world is losing their grasp every single day of being in control of this world. Verse 7, On the contrary, we speak God's hidden wisdom in a mystery, which God predestined before the ages for our glory. And none of the rulers of this age knew it. Because if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen and no ear has heard and what has never come into a man's heart is what God has prepared for those who love him. Now God has revealed them to us by the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit searches everything, even the deep things of God. Let me break this down for you real quick. God's wisdom, okay? He knew before he ever created man that man would fall. And he knew that the cross was going to have to take place. And Jesus accepted that challenge to come and be the Savior on that cross before the ages ever began. That is what verse 7 is alluding to. This was God's hidden wisdom, and it was a mystery. And God predestined this before the ages, and he did this for our glory. Now, verse 8 says that none of the rulers of this age knew about it. Let me tell you, there was no way in this world that God was going to allow Satan to know that the cross would break his back and would cost him everything. But it was a hidden mystery in God that when Jesus Christ paid the price for our sin, it broke the power of sin that was upon us and it held us prisoners. And the power of the shed blood of Jesus Christ paid that debt and it broke the chains and we was given the opportunity to walk out free through the blood and sacrifice on the cross of Jesus Christ. Because you see, that cross was for me and for you. Yet Jesus Christ 
did it for us because only his blood was sinless. Ours is tainted with sin. Now, in verse 9, it says that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and what has never come into a man's heart, those are the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Listen, let me, let, let me just tell you what that means. If it was possible, if it was possible for those people who are still lost and blind to the things of God, if they could really grasp what God has for those who come to him, they wouldn't come to him out of love. They would come to him because of God's benefits. They would come to God because they want God's treasures. And that's not what God wants. God doesn't want people to love him because of his great wealth. God wants people to love him because they are so appreciative of what he has done for them. That he has loved us first and he showed us his love through the death burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, which he did on our behalf. That is what God desires, for us to love him for the right reason and not because of his benefits. This scripture will prove that as true. In verse 10, it says, Now God has revealed them to us, meaning to us who's already accepted the Lord, by the Spirit. But you see, you got to be in Christ before you get revealed to you through the Holy Spirit what God has done for you. Now watch this. Because the Spirit searches everything, even the deep things of God. Verse 11. For who among men knows the concerns of a man except the spirit of the man that's in him? Only your inwardmost spirit knows what's going on inside of you. I don't know what's going on in your mind or in your heart. You don't know what truly is going on in the mind and in the heart of your children or your spouse or your boss or your best friend. They could be patting you on the back and thinking, hey, you know what, next Thursday, this guy, guy's going to be fired because we're having a downside, or, you know. Hey, your spouse could be saying, hey, you know, I just can't wait till his birthday or her birthday. I'm going to buy him a new car. But you you know, you'd, you'd never know that. I'm going to buy him a new car. He's going to have to pay for it, but I'm going to go down there and sign his name. But you know what? You do not know what's going on inside a person. Only that person's spirit. And that's the way what this scripture is talking about. Only the Holy Spirit of God truly knows what's going on with God. But yet it says, but us who has been born of the Spirit, God allows us to get glimpses of what he's got waiting for us. But those that are outside don't have a clue. They're not even in the game. They're still lost on their way to hell. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is. Only those who are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, we are the ones who has the Holy Spirit of God living inside of us. And we are privy to whatever the Lord wants to reveal to us through his Holy Spirit. Now, as we go on in verse 11, the latter part it says, In the same way, no one knows the concerns of God 
except the Holy Spirit of God. Verse 12. Now we have not received the Spirit of the world, but we have received the Spirit who is from God in order to know what has been freely given to us by God. Verse 13. We also speak these things, not in words taught by human wisdom, but by words taught by the Holy Spirit, explaining spiritual things to spiritual people. You see, people that are not born of the Spirit are not spiritual people. Only those who are born of the Holy Ghost are spiritual. Those that are not born of the Holy Spirit, they are still spiritually dead. Spiritually dead. And I'm going to tell you, a dead person doesn't see. A dead person can't hear. A dead person cannot speak. And if you are spiritually dead, you can't see the things of the Spirit of God. You can't understand the things of the Spirit of God. You can't hear the things of the Spirit of God because you're spiritually dead. That's the reason why the Bible says you must be born again. That's what Jesus told Nicodemus. Nicodemus, you must be born again. Nicodemus says, how can I be born again? Can I get inside my mother's womb and be reborn? No, no, Nicodemus. That which is born of the flesh is the flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. If you are born again of the Holy Spirit of God, you are alive to the things that God is letting us know through his Holy Spirit. Verse 14, just like I've already said, but the natural man does not welcome or receive what comes from God's Spirit because it is foolishness to him. He is not able to know it since it is evaluated or understood spiritually. I cannot tell you how many people have made comments to some of my prophecy videos that say, Jesus ain't never going to come back. Right there, they're filling a prophecy. That's exactly what God's word said, that in the last days, they're going to say, where's the promise of his coming? All the forefathers had fell asleep. Y'all Christians been saying that forever. No, we haven't. Jesus has only been gone barely, not even 2,000 years, so that's not forever. But the point is, the things that those like myself that try their hardest to make the world see, to save someone from hell, which is what this is all about. I'm sitting here tonight making a video. Why? in hopes that one of you watching this video right now will grasp the truth of God's word and will give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ that you and I can meet in heaven and we will enjoy the presence of our Holy Father forever. And if you're already born again, I hope that this helps you in some form or fashion. I truly hope it does. But as we go on, to the world, to those who are not born again, this word is foolishness to them. Now, verse 15, the spiritual person, however, <laughs> can evaluate everything, yet he himself cannot be evaluated or basically judged by anyone. Why is that? Because it's the Lord who judges us. Verse 16, For who has known the Lord's mind, that he may instruct the Lord? 
But we have the mind of Christ. Now what does that mean, to have the mind of Christ? The mind of Christ, which is available to all who are born again, is one who loves the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength. Everything is about the Lord. When you get up in the morning, it's all about the Lord. When you go and walk today's walk, it's all about the Lord. When you go to bed tonight, it's all about the Lord. Remember the first couple of verses of this chapter 2 of 1 Corinthians? Paul said this, When I came to you, brothers, announcing the testimony that came from God to you, I did not come with a brilliance of speech or of wisdom. For I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness. I was with you in fear. I was with you in much trembling. And my speech and my proclamation was not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the Holy Spirit of God and the demonstration of the power of God, so that your faith might not be based upon man's wisdom, but that your faith would be based upon God's power. My friend, if we can live every day and every minute that it was all about Jesus Christ and Him crucified. It's all about Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Because friend, he, he was crucified for you. And He was crucified for me. Think of that. He died. He died for you. And He died for me. Think of that. He died for us. And we are now born of the Holy Spirit of God. Our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And there's coming a day that you and I will one day step out of this earth, step out of this body, and we will open our eyes in either in the presence of God or in a place that we will be held until judgment day. And our destiny will already be determined. My friend, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you to bow your head and let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit of God, if there is someone that's watched this video and does not know you, as their Lord has never invited you into their heart Lord Jesus Holy Spirit of God give them the words touch their heart encourage them right now to become part of your family because you have already paid for their gift of salvation. It's theirs. All they have to do is simply claim it. It has their name on it. They just simply have to claim the gift of salvation. 
my friend, pray this prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, I truly don't know what I should say, but I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I need you to cleanse me of my sins. I know that I need you to write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I want to be part of your family. Lord Jesus, I ask you, come now into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me of unrighteousness. Father, make me anew and alive. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with the Comforter that I can walk in newness of life. And Father, put in me a burning desire to know more from God's Word. Put inside of me a desire that I would rather read your word than turn on the TV. I would rather read your word and spend time with you, my Father, than to go do something that is just a distraction. Father, make it where I want to be with you first each morning before I do begin my day and I go do my work and I do those fun things. Father, let me make you first and foremost in my life. As Paul said, let me know nothing except my Lord Jesus Christ and Him crucified for me, that I might live and not die, that I can open my eyes and be in your presence when I pass from this life. Thank you, Father, for hearing my prayer and for forgiving me of my sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. My friend, God loves you. And he cares about you. Never forget that. God bless you and thank you for watching this. I hope you've been touched and blessed. And I ask you that if you feel led, please share it with your friends and loved ones. God bless you and have a great day.